Welcome to Fridays with Fiscal. Uh, this is going to be covering the release highlights from April through June. And I'm Lori Miller. I will be covering the payroll portion and Pat Zeely will be covering the USAS portion. So we'll go ahead and get started. Um, back on April 9th on the 637 release, we, had, we added a mass future amounts option which will now allow you to load uh, future pay amounts uh, through a mass load. Uh, this will not allow attendance entries be, to be loaded. If, you, if they want attendance entries, they would still be using the absence attendance import option, but this one is just strictly if you want to mass load uh, future data. And if uh, you want more information on that, we have that on the documentation under the mass load future pay amount documentation section. Um, we added some new permissions for compensations. Uh, it looked like there was a need for access to position records and not compensation records uh, for particular employees. So we addressed that and a new role was created and it was added to users that already have USPS standard position access. So any role that had that position, that had position uh, permissions was updated to include the new compensation permission. And um, that will happen at startup. So the, the uh, roles, in roles added included USPS standard compensation, USPS standard compensation create, USPS standard compensation view, USPS standard compensation update, USPS standard compensation delete, and USPS standard compensation report. So if they had any of those, this, this was also added to that as well. There was a save and recall feature added to the quarter report. So now you can do a save and recall to you know, go back to how you had uh, set up the report initially before, if you wanted to save that. Uh, uh, the parameters. Uh, we also created out um, in the file archive a new legacy uh, data file archive folder, which is called other. So what can happen is that you that can be used to upload uh, miscellaneous reports that maybe were not are not a part of the payroll archiving. So maybe they create a report or there's some art report that they had done legacy and they want to preserve it, they could actually upload that out into the file archive and the other. And I'll kind of just quickly show you that. Oh, great. They must have updated this because I don't see my file archive. Sorry. They update this. Uh, hold on here. They update this database and we don't know when they're doing it. So <laughs> they, they turn things off, but we don't know it. All right, so now I should be able to go back out and show you that file archive other, maybe. Okay, here we go, here we go, here we go. That looks better. All right, so right here is the other tab that I'm talking about. So if they wanted to add a report that they would just click on the other. And then once they do that, they could go in and click on the create option. And when they click the create option, they're going to have the capability of then typing in a, a description. So maybe we'll just call it. Sorry, but it's a little slow here. I think it might be my internet connection. Maybe. Okay. And then we can actually go in here. Oh, come on. Go away. <laughs> there we go. Then I can go into the edit tab. <clears throat> Maybe, there we go. And then I can add a file to this test folder that I created. So by going out and finding my file and dropping it here, 
And then once I do that, my that report or what, that file that I I dropped would actually show up then in my test folder. And then you could still uh, do the same thing you do when you have your other reports in file archive. You could actually go in then and generate that report um, and process it just like you normally would. So that's just a new feature that we added out there. And that's kind of a nice feature. Um, one other thing we did on that release is we added a new funding source code, which was the code of F, which is for fe uh, federal special education Part B IDEA grant school age to the uh, CRDC reporting options. That was not out there before. So we actually added that. So it's now available. The next thing we did was um, on April 16th, there was a hot fix sent out. It was a 637-1 hot fix. What that did is it, crea it created, it corrected a bug in the W-2 report that would prevent the report from completing if a mismatch payroll item um, was found. Payroll item type, I should say, I'm sorry. If the payroll item type was found, it was causing a problem. So the error now is gonna be trapped and a warning will just be uh, put out on the report. That way it will not prevent the report from processing. On April 23rd, the 638 release came out and we had a bug fix. We corrected an issue that we had with the SCRS report files going to file archive with uh, an, an incorrect file extension. So even though a user, maybe they didn't select the PDF option, maybe they selected the CSV option, um, there was a problem when it was going out to file archive. So now we've corrected it. So if the user uses any other type of file extension, it's still going to go out to the file archive with the PDF extension option. So we corrected that. Um, we made some improvement, uh, performance improvements. The ODJ, ODJFS report, the employer distribution report, and the USAS employer distribution submission. So those should be a little bit um, quicker to process. There was a new feature that we added, which was a save and recall option to the perfect attendance report and the SCRS advance reports. So all the reports that you process during SCRS advance now have that save and recall option. On May 7th, we released the 639 uh, release, I should say, and we had a bug fix which basically fixed a problem that um, there was with splitting of days and hours on the SCRS per pay report. It was not always correct when a large error adjustment was present. So the formula that was used to split the days and hours into different earnings codes uh, was incorrect. So they corrected that. Um, they added some properties to the SCRS calculation and got that fixed. So now the splitting of those um, of those days and hours should be correct as far as the earnings and the days and hours on the report. Um, another thing that we fixed was um, the quarter report, um, it, including um, applicable gross adjustments for non-tax items, an employee on the report who has a non-tax pay item. So the quarter report and the year-to-date taxable gross should not be changed by the adjustment and they were being changed. So we fixed that. And then also the totals and the summary of the report for the quarter report and the year to date taxable gross, that they should not reflect those figures as well and they were. Um, so we basically made a correction to that. Um, another thing we fixed was um, additional withholding adjustment journals were being added to the to the two day withholding amounts on payroll items, we fixed that because they should not be added to that, that field. Um, we corrected access to the standard re read only user uh, for the census report. We changed that from uh, census create to actually census report now. And then previously the supervisor um, box was set to not allow null selection. So basically it was forcing you or making you have something in that field. We corrected that, made a change to it. 
So now the supervisor field will allow a blank. It will allow it to be null. Um, improvements that we made on the 639 release were uh, performance improvements to the payroll initial, initialization. We made about a 60% improvement to that. Modify uh, for the payroll was about a 52% improvement. And then the unposting portion of processing payroll, we made about a 73% improvement. Um, we added the code field to the non-contract compensation mass load extract. Before that code, that new code uh, field that we added wasn't included in the mass load. Now for non-contracts, now it is. And then also a crew wage warning will only show on the payroll error report when accrued wages go from uh, positive to a negative figure. Before, um, they were showing for like everything and your report could be like huge. So we corrected that. So only if it goes from positive accrued to negative, negative accrued, will that show up on the error report now. We added a new feature, which is the uh, in the utility option. And I will just kind of show you where it's at. Right here, whoops, I missed it. It's called payroll item mismatch utility. And what this does is after you import data for a district, you could go out here, you'll see here, I don't have anything in this test, but I do have a screenshot of what kind of what it looks like. Let me see if I can find it right here. It'll look something like this. It will have like the fix option and the employee information. And then it will show you like the code, the, the item type, and then the configuration. And nine times out of 10, the reason that these are showing as mismatch is maybe there is a record out there like it's listed as social security tax, but it's, it's configuration is set to, uh, to like Medicare. So those are the kind of things that you can look at and you can fix by just simply clicking on the fix button. When you click that, you'll get a pop up and it'll ask you, it'll actually ask you, you know, like if you want to do this. Um, another huge thing is we have seen um, there could be like a payroll item out there that is an annuity under the payroll item configuration. But when the import happened, the, the employee or maybe several employees are showing with that payroll item as a regular. So that needs to be fixed. And then to do that, you can use this option to fix that. Um, and then we always suggest after you make any fixes on this mismatch uh, utility, that you actually go into the payroll item for the employee to verify and make sure that it looks accurate. Um, another thing we did on this release on the 639 is we added uh, several save and recall features to the check SRS advance report, the job calendar report, the leave balance report, the new contract report, ODJFS report, and the W-2 reports. So we're adding the save and recall. We're just gradually adding that to mo most of the reports. Um, on May 17th, on the 639-1, we had a hot fix go out, and that was to fix an issue where the payroll processing does not properly warn a user when the position does not have a payroll account. So we fixed that, so now they will actually see that come up on the, on the, uh, the error report. Um, on May 21st, we had the 640 release go out. We had some improvements, uh, which, this is really nice because we had a lot of uh, inquiries about this. When a refund is processed, they could not see, like maybe you did a refund of, of a deduction of an annuity. Well, when you're doing that, they're paying taxes on that. Well, when you went into the highlight viewer to view it, you know, all you would see was the refund. You did not see any of the payroll items that they paid when that refund was issued. So now that is fixed. So now on the highlight viewer under refund, whether it be under payments or under the dashboard for the particular employee, 
you'll actually be able to see what payroll items were paid when that refund was issued. Um, let's see, where are we at here? I'm losing my spot. Oh, um, another thing that was added, we added some new features. The statement and recall was added to the payroll report as well as the posted payroll report. Um, and the SCRS merge process was added within the SCRS advance portion. So that was actually added on the, on the SCRS advanced screen. I'll kind of show you real quickly here. So, oh, let's see. Sorry, my screen is so slow today. So right down here, we now have the SCRS merge option. So there's no more messing around with going out to classic and having to pull the files in that way. You could actually go in and do it right here, which is really nice. On May 31st, we had a hot fix hey, go out. Maureen, with I just have yeah. a question on that. Sure. Yes. Sorry. Um, we have a couple of districts that have more than one file. Okay. How do they process it that like um, is there a way, like, do they have to do one at a time and then my, add my in guess a new merged would. file? I don't know if it'll allow you to merge more than one. Hold on, let me take a look here. Mm, you know what? I Let me double check with uh, the programmer that developed it and find out if you can actually load in more than one file at a time or if you truly have to go in, merge in one, create the file, and then go in and merge another. Let me ask him that question, okay? Okay. Okay, and then I will uh, I'll come back with you. I'll actually shoot a message to everybody that's in the meeting today and let you guys know what the answer to that is. Thanks, Roxana. Um, okay. Let's see, where were we here? Oh, here we go, okay. Uh, the 641 hot fix. There was a problem uh, for smaller payroll districts that were experiencing infinite polling when they were processing. So uh, we found out that it, um, the user interface was getting out of sync. So when they were initializing the payroll, so that has been corrected. The, the, use, the, the developers went out and they found the problem and they actually fixed it. So hopefully, they will not experience that problem any longer. Um, a new feature was also added. Um, it was the, uh, hold on here. The district had a, they wanted the MS Exchange Office 365 with SMTP authorization enabled. So we actually went out and we added that. So let me go out to, it's under the uh, email systems, it's, as long as I have that, as long as that's not missing and I have to add that back. Go out and pull that out. Email configuration. Oops. Of course, of course it's not there. <laughs> Hold on, let me go pull it back up real quick. I'm so sorry about that. Here we go. Okay, so we added this option here. It's make this bigger so you can see it. It's the enable, enable the uh, SCART TLS email support to email notification configuration. So if they are wanting that, they need to make sure that they check that box on that configuration in order to get that to work properly. So that was something that was added as well. On June 2nd, which was the 640.2, we had another hot fix, which was a bug fix. Um, we had found that if an employee was terminated while a future pay amount was included in the payroll and the payroll was modified or updated or deleted, the pay group removal um, would fail. 
So uh, this was corrected uh, to place the future pay amount back and the report and then report an error on the payroll error report that the future amount cannot be included because the pay the employee is terminated. So basically, if you had a terminated employee, you had them in future, you're making a modification. Well, it was causing a problem with trying to make the modification. So now that terminated employee will actually go out to future and then the error will be error will be produced telling you, hey, this employee is no longer here. On June 4th, on the 641 release, we had a bug fix um, on the new contract report. The positions with no payroll accounts uh, prevented the report from completing, so that uh, was corrected. Um, on the SRS advance, we had several problems. The um, SRS advance included terminated positions, so a terminated position was causing the compensation errors to be thrown. So the fix was to prevent the SRS advance from including terminated positions. So we fixed that. Another problem was the advanced positions report um, uh, was using date range of the earliest payroll start date and the last payroll stop date for the payrolls. The employee is uh, paid to look at look up the retirement days using their retirement service. So the method uses a past date range to look up adjustments. And the fiscal year date advance report uses a different retirement service. So they were not meshing. So an update with updated report to use the correct date ranges was, was made by our developers um, when you're including retirement day adjustments. So that has been fixed. Another problem was the fiscal year report, um, advance report. Um, and advanced, excuse me, and advanced report positions were using the payroll date range instead of the pay group date range to find days from the payroll. So the fix was to update the date range being used for SCRS days count. Um, another problem when the district goes into advance, the rate on the SCRS and the SRS annuity and the employer SRS item um, is stored in a custom field. So if the rate is if the rate is changed on the live file, so once we're in advance and the change of the rate for some reason on the live file, we can still use the rate as it existed when the employee was advanced. So it's similar to like what we used to do in classic. So if a compensation is advanced and we try to calculate the SRS item for the advanced compensation there's no safe rate for the pay item. So they fixed that. <coughs> and we are not withholding SRS items if there's no saved advance rate found. So if there's an advance uh, rate saved, which there should be now, that will be used you know, throughout the advance process. Even though maybe they have a new rate, maybe they changed positions, now they're a principal and they have full pickup on pickup or something. That those, the new rate you added to live isn't going to be used. It's still going to use that advanced rate. Another problem is if an employee compensation is in, 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 in advance, I can't say that, the regular wages for that employee are used to calculate the advance amount. If the employee is paid new earnings while in advance, that does not get calculated as an advance amount, which is correct. It is just normal SRS amount withholding. Um, so that should be correct, but an example of this would be if an employee is paid a miscellaneous pay when they're in advance, an employee has new earnings. The advance gross is separated to calculate the advance, and the non-advance is used to calculate the normal STRS amount. However, the employee's STRS amount is always calculated using the total applicable gross, which includes both the advance and the non-advanced grows. This difference in grows used for calculations can cause a rounding difference. So we found that where the how the rounding difference was being processed, and we corrected that um, to, to, to prevent non-advanced, or I'm sorry, yeah, I'm going to the wrong thing. We found that and corrected the rounding error. So when new earnings are included in the payroll with advanced earnings, there, won't, there should not be any more rounding issues. 
Another problem was if there was an archive compensation and it falls within the fiscal year, uh, the compensation date range overlaps the fiscal year date range and it is included in the calculations on the fiscal year report. Um, we wanted to add a, a warning message for the employee on the report saying that archive compensation was included in the, on the employee. Um, so they basically did that to prevent the United Advance report from including the archive compensation. Well, in a little bit here, we're going to find that really wasn't such a good thing because we had all kinds of problems with that. But we did do that back on this release, on the 641 release. We made some improvements to the SRS Advanced Fiscal Year Report to include a message if archive compensation is included. Um, basically, like I just talked about, it's going to show up on the um, report. Um, and like I said, thus saying that, after they did it and people started running the advance, we found that that was a big problem. So on the 642 oh, release, we actually took it back off because it was more of a problem than it was helping. So we got rid of it. Some new features that we did add were um, on the ODJFS, they were wanting a new optional header for an optional validation that can be ran out of the ODJFS uh, site. So some users were asking for that option to be included on the report, uh, on a report. So we actually added that. Uh, we added an optional header checkbox of the ODJFS new hire report. And you can see right here, this include headers for validation and submission file boxes there. If they want that optional header included on the file, they can check that box and create the report. On the 642 release, which was set out on June 18th, we had a, a bug, couple bug fixes. We had uh, the payroll and initialization fail with the stale state exception or position pay error. That was because of a timing issue and that uh, was corrected. They fixed the bug in the payroll posting that shows the job failed, even when the posting completed correctly and it looked like it was processed. They fixed that. They also fixed a W-2 report uh, to fail issue. Again, that was behind the scenes. Uh, it was nothing that you could see on the UI. It was actually done behind the scenes. And then another thing they did was correct the tooltip on the payroll initialization uh, component to description. So basically now when they go, when the, the pay groups are in the selected area, it will actually say the selected pay groups will be included in the payroll. That is a, the tool tip. Improvements that were made on this release were, um, they improved the performance of the SRS monthly report. And this is about an 85% improvements in the runtime. They added a last pay and contract warning, which is now out there. And they removed uh, the recently added STRS advanced warning stating the calculations include archive compensations, which we just talked about up here a little bit ago because it was causing so many problems. A new feature that we added was to convert the personal leave to sick. sick we added the uh, employee and pay group selection. Uh, we also added a new feature to prevent a user from saving a retirement payroll item with a rate type of tax tables. That was causing some problems we, we were finding as, as people were processing payrolls and stuff. So we uh, now have uh, corrected that. We had a bug fix uh, go out on a 642-1 release, which was uh, sent out on June 23rd. Uh, the bug fix was uh, the payroll initial, initialization failed when unexpected exceptions occur. Uh, the exceptions are now going to be caught and reported on the error report so that you shouldn't experience that problem any longer. The employer, employee master report was failing because no payroll accounts were found in history. Uh, we updated the report to check for the condition and then just to continue processing. Don't stop. Just keep processing. The SRS advance, we added a message to the fiscal year report and the position report. We added an info message, basically 
for no active position level or employee level SRS item found for the position number. And then we also added an error, which is a fatal. A job calendar was not assigned for a compensation with a particular code. So you have to make sure you assign the job calendar to correct that on the report. On June 28th, we had a, bug, a hot fix go out on the 642-2 release. Uh, we corrected a bug with, that was found in the SCR surcharge report that was basically preventing the report to, to com, from completing when, there, again, there were no payroll accounts found in history. Uh, so we corrected that on the surcharge report. On, the four, on June 30th, we had a 643 release go out. There were some bug fixes uh, to employee distribution. The pro rating was not correctly excluding, excluding payroll items withheld at the position level. So the pro rating function was corrected to filter position level amounts when it was calculating employee level amounts. So now that's corrected during the employee distribution. Uh, the position code status and other missing properties were added back to the EMIS position entry uh, view. Those were somewhere or another, something happened um, a few releases back that they somehow got removed. They're back there now. On the SRS report, the amount with held adjust funds are now included in the SRS member deposit field on the report. Um, doing uh, some testing, it was found that if um, you had to do an adjustment for an employee, maybe they have a withholding done on the regular 400 record for the employee. When you added the adjustment, it was not correctly updating on the SRS report. So we have fixed that. The pay report, um, we updated current totals to include the items from current payroll, payroll not just contract amounts. So example, uh, miscellaneous items that do not apply to a contract are added to the pay through current. They were not, are not included in the totals. Um, another bug fix was the payroll item, read a, ugh, payroll item refund. Medicare is excluded in the payroll item refund because Medicare was already being withheld on the normal amount when they did the refund. But Social Security was not. So we needed to correct that. So Social Security would be excluded as well when there was a refund process. We uh, added a new feature to warn the user when they save a position with no retirement code or retirement code of none. So now when they're creating a position record, they, and they leave, if they leave that retirement field empty or put none, um, they're going to get a warning here telling them, hey, just so you know, there's nothing out here. And then just so you know, on the on July 2nd, we had a, a hot fix go out in 643.1, which corrected a bug, which was found in the auditor of, the auditor of state extract, where there was missing data and the refunded payments, and that could cause the report to fail. So we corrected that for the auditor of state report. And we also corrected a bug on the employee master report that would cause failure if the employee was missing a marital status or the number of exemptions on the federal payroll item record. Okay, that is everything I have for all of the updates that were made uh, from April through June. Does anybody have any other questions as far as the payroll updates? Okay, we will take a couple minutes here to get switched over so Pat can go ahead and get on. And I appreciate everyone listening in and have a great weekend. And we'll go ahead and let's take about a five minute break and then we'll come back and we'll go ahead and we'll work on the USAS side of things. Thank you. Thank you, Lauren. So here's my file. I leave the purchase order field blank. It will auto populate. Every new purchase order starts with an item one. So the first two lines are one purchase order, and then it starts another purchase order and so forth, so, so forth. This one happens to be a 
split PO, so we're going to import that as well. The first two lines of the item number is going to split to the T1 